Collect the Wrestlepalooza. Collect the Wrestlepalooza. Hello everyone, welcome to Collect a Wrestlepalooza. Today's video will feature three of my favorite WWF LJN 8-inch rubber action figures. Now I love these for many reasons, but the reason that I collect the WWF LJNs is nostalgia. I never owned them as a child. The only one that I was able to purchase was a Macho Man. My parents bought it for me after I begged them to spend the money on it. The LJNs were actually pretty expensive for the time. And my Fig Fed didn't really get too many characters until the Hasbros came out, and my parents were able to afford them a little bit easier. So I owned the Macho Man as a child in the LJN. The reason I picked that one is I thought his pose was good for body slamming other figures, but of course I never owned another LJN for him to even body slam. So now as an adult, I collect them for nostalgia and to fill in some of the figures that I never owned as a child. Uh, I only collect complete uh, figures. If it's missing the accessory, I won't buy it. Or uh, if it's missing the accessory, I'll buy the accessory separate. I try to get ones that are untouched, you know, meaning not touched up. Uh, if you are interested in, in if these figures are touched up, please check out uh, the other LJN video from my channel. I do discuss how uh, I believe that a lot of these LJNs are touched up on the secondary market. Uh, I also only collect ones that I think are near mint or uh, pretty unplayed with. I don't like the ones that have a lot of, uh, you know, marks from being wrestled with. I, I don't think they look too good on the shelf, and ultimately I like them for display. Now the first one uh, that I like here, and, and I think you can tell the reason that I like these is they all have accessories. I, I like to collect the figures that have uh, the rubber counterparts, or in the case of Rowdy Piper, the kilt. I just thought it was great uh, that LJN, you know, released these figures all with the same price, but some of them had a special add-on. So, of course, the ones with a special add-on are, are better figures. Rowdy Piper came out in 1984. This is a Series 1 figure. You can see he's in really, really good condition. Um, now, this one is a red boot variant. Uh, in this series, there were two Pipers that came out, one with the, these red or blood red boots and then ones with boots that are more of a maroonish color. I do own one with a maroon color, but uh, I don't have a kilt for it. So I have one kilt between the two of them. Uh, the kilt actually came with the one with the purple boots, but this figure was in better shape overall, so I put it on this guy instead. Very nice on the shelf. Now, one thing I notice about this one with the red boots is his entire look is different. You know, his hair is a little bit lighter. His eyes are very, very blue. Uh, it almost looks a little more cartoony, so I don't know if that's reminiscent of the factory that it came from, but regardless, a really nice Rowdy Roddy Piper. Of course, the kilt, I won't remove it, but it just has a little Velcro there, and it comes right off. Second figure, Jake Roberts. Of course, how can you go wrong with a Jake Roberts with a removable Damien? I mean, geez, this, is, this figure uh, commands a price on eBay, particularly the complete ones. I did uh, spend a little bit for him. One thing I really like is his tights. You can see that those snakes are not really painted on. It's almost a, uh, you know, a form from the uh, factory. So it's not a, you know, brushed on snake. It's a, it's a real, you know, conforms to the tight. It looks like it's part of the tights, which I think is a really nice detail. You know, the purple boots, this one you can see has no signs really of play. It does have this black mark on the boots. His hair is pretty well intact. A uh, little bit of play, you know, on the front of his hair there. But uh, and then, of course, the Damien. Now, the Damien, I believe, has probably a small piece of wire or something inside. You can pose him however you like. I'm not going to pose him too much because, you know, he's a little stiff. I wouldn't want to crack the wire, but uh, you are able to pose him if you like. Um, now, one th other thing that I want to note here is when I get these action figures... I tend not to wash them. You know, I might take ones that are in really crummy condition and give them one wash on some warm water with a toothbrush or something like that. But one thing I've noticed is these LJNs tend to get sticky. And it's my belief that submerging them in water doesn't help that. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's just my opinion. 
And also, I kind of like when they look a little bit older, you know, when they might have a little bit of dirt or a little bit of dust. It kind of shows that, you know, the figure is, has not been cleaned, almost like an antique firearm or something like that. I almost feel like coming in with a harsh abrasive and really scrubbing these down uh, might impact uh, the overall just quality of the figure for years to come. Again, that's just my opinion. So when I buy one and I get it and I don't need to clean it at all, I'm thrilled. Uh, I did clean this Piper. Um, in fact, I abraded the back a little bit. His shirt is almost completely intact. This blue and this yellow, um, there was uh, quite a bit of a streak of blue and yellow on there. I went in and tried to wash that off. I think I did a pretty good job. I did abrade through the shirt a little bit. But overall, you know, again, he's in almost mint condition. Uh, these other two, the Jake and the Honky Tonk Man, I didn't touch. I just got them and uh, have left them the way that I received them. Now, Jake Roberts was a Series 4 uh, from 1987. Now, Coco Beware, who's another one of my favorites, I did not put into my top three, and the reason why is I featured him on my touch-up video. Uh, but I think it's interesting that two of the figures from Series 4 both have the animal counterparts, and those are great accessories. I love the Coco Beware, and I love the uh, Frankie uh, that sits on his hand. Final here is Honky Tonk Man. Now, Honky Tonk Man, of course, as you know, is one of the most more expensive figures. Um, I did buy him without the guitar and bought the guitar separately. He's from Series 5, which is 1988, and then repeated uh, Series 6, the Grand Toys, Black Cards, uh, famous figures, which of course command a very, very high price. I believe the way you can tell if you have a Series 5 or a Series 6 is to look at his boots. Um, I know that the Grand Toys figures in general will have the uh, company logo at the bottom of the boot as opposed to on the back. So you can see here, the bottom of his boots are just clean, um, but you can also see there's not much wear on them, which means this guy was not played with too much. And you can see on the back here, it's Titan Sports. So um, that's one way you can tell if you have a black card uh, version of the Honky Tonk Man, although I don't know if the Grand Sports, excuse me, if the Titan ones were actually repackaged in the Grand Sports black card. So uh, if you do know the answer to that, certainly leave a comment, but uh, that's how I believe you can tell if it's a black card one or not. Now, it's very, very hard to find a Honky Tonk Man with a clean face. The reason that I believe this one is not touched up is you can see a little bit of wear on the nose, and the rest of the face looks very uniform. So I believe if they were going to go in and touch, touch up this figure, they would have touched up the nose as well, which they did not. So I think this is a, you know, a clean, true Honky Tonk Man. It's one of the best ones from my collection. And also his hands, you can see, are pretty well intact as well. One other thing about these three wrestlers in particular is they're known for their commentary. You know, Rowdy Roddy Piper had Piper's Pit. Jake the Snake Roberts had uh, the, you know, the Snake Pit. Honky Tonk Man famously, you know, used his guitar to knock out Jake the Snake Roberts in the Snake Pit. None of these wrestlers were extremely well built. They weren't, you know, the Vince McMahon behemoth, uh, you know, steroid freaks. They made their living with their character and their voice, uh, which I think is, is somewhat poetic. Um, and I think that that really shows the strength of them uh, as really smart, genius, professional wrestlers. And that's another reason that these three uh, are my favorites. So that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed my commentary on the WWF LJNs. If you do like this content, please be sure to subscribe. I'm hoping to get double-digit subscribers sometime within the next couple months. And anytime anyone subscribes or leaves a comment, it just motivates me to show more of my collection uh, and also to continue to pursue uh, posting these videos on YouTube. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Collect the Wrestlepalooza. Collect the Wrestlepalooza.